Antibiotics, game changers in the treatment of bacterial infections. Sometimes the difference between life and death have become the victims of their own success. The rise of so-called superbugs has worried experts for years. They've warned doctors not to overprescribe them because their improper use risks increased antimicrobial resistance. But it seems that horse has already bolted. Researchers are finding evidence that antibiotic resistance is now built into our environment. And that should worry all of us. I was a passenger in the car at the time and there was a car that overtook us on the wrong side of the road. Just 25, Vanessa Carter was barely alive when paramedics arrived at her accident scene. I had neck injuries, my back injuries, I had a fractured pelvic bone, I had internal bleeding in the abdomen, and that actually was the biggest emergency at the time that they needed to do surgeries on. Vanessa also sustained a massive head injury. The broken bones in her face needed multiple reconstructive surgeries and she lost an eye. You had a number of surgeries and it was really an infection that, that wreaked havoc on, on your life and your body. Tell me about that. In my sixth year of surgeries, I got discharged from hospital. I went to go shopping. I got to my car and I felt moisture on my face and I pulled down the rearview mirror because I thought maybe my eyes are tearing and out was coming a lot of pus, you know, a lot of discharge from the eye. Vanessa had been fitted with a prosthetic eye and the facial bone behind it had become infected with what's known as methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus or MRSA. In layperson's terms, a bacteria resistant to antibiotics. Most of us have taken antibiotics prescribed by our doctor to treat serious infection. They have been life-changing for many, but with increased use and misuse, the world is facing a resistance crisis. In the years after her accident, Vanessa had often been prescribed antibiotics. Over time, the bacteria in her body developed a resistance to them, eventually giving the MRSA bug the upper hand, and it went to work on her body she'd fallen victim to a superbug. It's extremely frightening. You know, you go to bed at night and you say, is there going to be enough skin left on my face tomorrow morning? You know, because there was a time when my face was so infected that something simple like taking my son to school, you know, the kids would say, what's wrong with your mommy's face? I started feeling sick, so I went to the emergency rooms and they admitted me to ICU. We've reported on superbugs before, as they're now considered one of the 21st century's biggest threats. Drug-resistant tuberculosis, for example, has been causing concern for years and is what dietitian Ingrid Skuman was diagnosed with while working in the Eastern Cape. I ended up being in a coma, deteriorating very quickly. So the physician phoned my family, said, get on the next plane, come and say your goodbyes to Ingrid. My mom can still recall standing in the doorway and my eyes were still closed, clenched fists, calling out, Mama, Mama. I was vomiting every day, having diarrhea, my hair fell out, my eye colour changed. You've got a chest drain, an abdominal tap. TB kills around 54,000 South Africans a year. That's 148 people per day. Working as a dietitian, I had lost many patients due to drug-resistant TB, so I was very aware that I might die. Hospitals are the biggest source of drug-resistant infections, and that's where Ingrid believes she got infected. But Vanessa's story casts a more concerning shadow on the phenomenon. The infection came back again, but this time worse. You know, my face was more red, there was more discharge, so I went for a similar surgery. But two weeks later, the infection was back again. Her doctors scheduled yet more surgery to try and save her prosthetic eye. We did that. Two weeks later, the infection was back again. It was just like a, like a bad episode of deja vu. Vanessa clearly had a drug-resistant infection. But where had it come from? You can get MRSA in a hospital. You can get MRSA in the community if you share towels with each other, if you go to a gym. You can get MRSA by contaminated food. 
Now, I'm not a microbiologist at all, but um, to this day, I still don't have that answer. Alarmingly, superbugs are all around us and rely on a complex system of which we are just one part. And they are resistant to many of our current antibiotics. We've traveled to rural KZN to get answers on this impending global health crisis. And we're asking them of a very unlikely source, this towering heap of chicken manure. It's not the most glamorous working environment, but this collection of manure is helping scientist and researcher Professor Luther King Abia Akebe better understand the system in which drug resistance is thriving. So let me show you, for example, the whole one health aspect. We have a human component here, we have our animal component here, then we have our environmental component this side. You know, environmental component here, I talk about the soil because we are talking about manure. Now, our animals and this manure can come in here into the environment through surface wash off. It can go. The professor goes on to say the manure now containing superbugs and traces of antibiotics is used to fertilize plants. Also, residue from the manure runs into rivers and other water sources used to irrigate crops. If humans consume the vegetables from here without proper washing, they can get the antibiotic resistant bacteria. If humans consume water from this river without treating, they might get the antibiotic resistant bacteria. So that whole circle just closes. Professor Abir's concerns are later confirmed at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, where samples of the manure are analyzed. His colleague, Professor Sabir Esak, says resistance detected in the soil increased when antibiotic-rich chicken manure was applied. So what happens is that if we plant leafy vegetables that are eaten raw, there's always a risk that if you don't wash them properly and you eat them raw, that you're going to ingest drug-resistant bacteria. Strong immune and digestive systems will likely fight off an infection. Others might not be so lucky. What is even scarier is that we've found these drug-resistant bacteria within, within the cells of the plant. So no matter how much you wash them, it's, inside. it's still going to be inside. And so there is the risk of foodborne ingestion mm. of drug resistant bacteria. So we're ba basically eating the problem. Eating the problem. And when it comes to meat, we generally cook meat and so the heat would destroy the bacteria. But when it comes to things being eaten raw, there's an issue. So our kitchens are becoming a source of drug resistant bacteria. And that should concern all of us. Because we're all too familiar with the impacts of hospital acquired infection. Can you talk to me about how long your healing process was altogether? While you're sick and you just get bad news, uh, it's, it's very hectic to bounce back from that. I've always wanted to be a mother more than anything else. And when they told me that, you know, maybe you should give up that dream because your body has been through a lot. Um, oh. So that was hard for me because I was like, that's the one thing that I want. Ingrid's story, though, has a happy ending. She recovered and gave birth to a little girl. <laughs> but it's likely her daughter will grow up in a world where antibiotics no longer work. In our interconnected systems, the strongest bugs develop resistance and proliferate. A situation exacerbated in poorer countries like ours. But it spreads because of poor water sanitation and hygiene, poor hygienic practices. And if you think about our informal settlements, it's large numbers of people living in very close proximity, inadequate access to clean water and sanitation. The grind of daily life in poorer communities is ripe for infection. These are places where poor nutrition and the lack of clean drinking water is rampant and compromised immune systems common. That means higher rates of infection and inevitably more use of antibiotics. The vicious circle is self-evident. But the real kicker is we aren't developing new antibiotics. What we currently have is the best defense against infection. And as we've seen, the overuse and misuse of these drugs is rampant. 
and the complex system of which we're a part is making things worse. What are the consequences of AMR if it goes unabated? There is this whole study that was done and it shows that if nothing is done by 2050, then we are going to be losing like 10 million people every year. It's not like it's a problem that cannot be solved. It can be solved if we are responsible enough. We are all responsible for what is happening. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.